Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Bye Bye Birdie is a 1963 musical romantic comedy that was directed by George Sidney. The screenplay was done by Irvin Brecker, and it's based on a 1960 musical of the same name. The film stars Janet Lee, Dick Van Dyke, Anne Margaret, Maureen Stapleton, Bobby Rydell, Jesse Pearson, and Ed Sullivan. Van Dyke and Paul Lynn reprise their roles from the original Broadway production, and it was Dick Van Dyke's feature film debut. The storyline goes that the none-too-successful songwriter, Albert Peterson, hatches a plot with his secretary and long-suffering girlfriend to get rock and roll phenomenon Conrad Birdie to sing one of his songs on the Ed Sullivan Show. The pop star would then symbolically kiss goodbye to a young lady chosen at random from the country's womanhood, this being his last appearance before being drafted. Complicated to start with, things get more tricky as everyone, including Albert's clinging mother, descend on the small town where the chosen girl lives. Conrad Birdie was a parody on Elvis Presley. The musical was based on the anger that arose from Presley being drafted in 1958. But the character's name actually came from the writer's decision that the name of the country and western singer Conway Twitty was far more humorous and a safer parody than Presley's name. Interesting enough, Conway Twitty was in the U.S. Army first before starting his singing career. Ironically, the show's producers originally wanted Presley for the role of Conrad Birdie. Presley was really interested in doing the film, but his manager, Colonel Tom Parker, refused to let him play the role which would be spoofing himself. Dick Gaucher went on to originate the role that was done on stage. The movie's director, George Sidney, was so taken with the talent of Anne Margaret that when the film was edited, he went to Columbia executives and proposed the opening and closing bumpers that would showcase her. They refused to pay for any additional filming, so Sidney rented the studio and the crew at his own expense. He then asked the composer and lyricist to come up with a title song. He filmed Anne Margaret's skip-flipping, hair-tossing rendition of that song six months after principal photography was completed on the film. It cost him a whopping $60,000 to do that, which eventually was repaid to the director by the studio. Anne Margaret became a household sensation. The song that made Dick Van Dyke's career put on a happy face was unsuccessful in the early stage previews, and it was almost cut from the production entirely. The creative team found a different spot for it in the musical, and it played out beautifully then. The steps of the courthouse that's used for Bertie's Welcome to Sweet Apple have appeared in countless movies over the decades. It's a major part of Universal's backlot, and it was the location of Scout and Jim's several visits in To Kill a Mockingbird, as well as being the famous courthouse clock in Back to the Future. The town square it anchors was so popular that it was used by hundreds of film and television shows, including many that were not produced by Universal. In the film, Dick Van Dyke's character wants to be a chemist, but his mother wants him to write songs. He had never managed to sell a song, but was about to sell his first one when Bertie is drafted. To create the illusion that Albert Peterson had invented a formula that could increase animal velocity, two replicas of the desert tortoises were built. One was powered by wet cell batteries and four-speed gears, and it could reach a speed of 16 and a half miles an hour. 
The other was rigged to travel in water and be shot out of a fish pond by a compressed air ram. It took two entire months to build and perfect these models to where they would work properly at a total cost of about $5,000 for them. In the scene between Anne Margaret and Janet Lee, as soon as Miss Lee is shown in a full medium shot in her bra, she states, He's all the things I wanted to get away from. This is thought to be a reference to her role in Psycho from 1960, in which she appears in her bra in the opening scene, a movie that Hitchcock acknowledged probably harmed her career because there was too strong of an association with that role. Bristol Myers bought the song Put On a Happy Face from the show's producers, and they used it as their pitch song for their flagship product, Windex. That TV jingle ended up going like this. Dust you want to clear up? Put on a Windex shine. Clean up that dirt and cheer up? Put on a Windex shine. Spray Windex all over the place and put on a Windex shine. A whole generation heard this jingle on TV and on radio all the way up to the early 80s. There is a boatload of uncredited teenagers that include past and future actresses and celebrities that appear in this movie. People like Melinda Marks, who's the daughter of Groucho Marx, Kim Darby, who went on to star in True Grit, Linda Henning, who played Betty Jo in Petticoat Junction, Elaine Joyce, who was an actress and a game show guest star, and wife to Bobby Van and Neil Simon, Melody Patterson, who played Wrangler Jane on F Troop, Bobby Lynn Fields, Michael Smith, and Lynn Reddy, who were all one-time Mouseketeers on the original Mickey Mouse Club. The three gymnasts that are seen at the beginning of the broadcast of the Ed Sullivan Show are introduced as Frank, Dean, and Sandy McWilliams. This is a thinly veiled reference to Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr. Ed Sullivan, who played himself in the film, would later reprise the One Last Kiss segment for real on his weekly variety show. In 1967, Gary Lewis from Gary Lewis and the Playboys performed the song on the show. In 1966, Jesse Pearson, who plays Birdie in the film, reprises his role as an Elvis-like rock star in season six of The Andy Griffith Show. His character is called Keevy Hazelton. Keevy is a much more gracious person than Birdie is. Peterson also played the Elvis-inspired Pharaoh in Andrew Lloyd Webber's Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat that was done on stage. Now, this movie is credited with making Anne Margaret a superstar during the 1960s, and it led to her appearing with Elvis Presley himself immediately after this in Viva Las Vegas which was shot in the summer of 1963, but it wasn't released until 1964. That movie led to a long-standing relationship with the King and Anne Margaret. According to her memoir entitled A Hell of a Life by Maureen Stapleton, she states that at the rap party after completion of this film, she coaxed Anne Margaret to come sit down beside her because she told her, I'm the only person who worked on this film who doesn't want to sleep with you. You absolutely drove people nuts during filming. Because this story has made its rounds, Miss Stapleton was very clear in the book that her intention was not to imply that her young colleague was promiscuous at all, but that she was just trying to save her a lot of unpleasant and unwanted attention that she was getting at the party. Take a look back at this great musical from the early 60s. It's always a fun watch. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.